breaking news from the January 6th Select Committee. The committee has issued subpoenas for six more individuals who they say had knowledge of or participated in those efforts to send false, phony, alternate electors for the ex-president, who of course had lost, to Congress. The folks subpoenaed today include Kelly Ward. She reportedly spoke to Donald Trump and members of his staff about election certification issues in Arizona. Today, subpoena, subpoenas also include Doug Massetrino, who was part of a plan to arrange for an alternate slate of electors in Pennsylvania. Let's bring into our coverage senior Capitol Hill correspondent Garrett Haight. Garrett, what do you know? Well, Nicole, these uh, subpoenas really show what the committee, I think, wants to demonstrate is the breadth of the plan here to install these alternate electors. They include two Trump campaign officials who were involved in Election Day operations and who the committee says in their letters were then part uh, immediately of going from Election Day operations into the so-called Stop the Steal movement. You mentioned Doug Mastriano in Pennsylvania, Kelly Ward in Arizona. There's another person subpoenaed who was involved in Stop the the steel rallies in Arizona. And the final subpoena goes to a woman in Michigan who appears to have been only a witness to Rudy Giuliani's effort to get involved in alternate elector schemes there. So I think taken as a whole, you see what the committee's trying to do here, really reaching all the way back in time to election day and kind of pointing out that the seeds of the insurrection and what we saw here on January 6th were planted that day. And then you sort of see in the text of these subpoena letters, how they believe, you know, these folks out in the states were then trying to get their set of ideas about, you know, stopping the steal, ways to get around uh, certified elections in various states in front of the president and in front of the vice president before January 6th. So, Garrett, you gave us a couple things to unpack. Let me first read that paragraph you mentioned about uh, Ms. Cox as a witness to Rudy Giuliani and ask you about this in the context of reporting over the weekend that uh, Rudy Giuliani is actually in talks to potentially cooperate. Um, so the committee writes this to Ms. Cox. You reportedly were a witness when Rudy Giuliani pressured state lawmakers to disregard election results in Michigan and when he said that certifying the election results would be a criminal act. We would like to better understand these and other statements and events that you witnessed or in which you participated and communications we believe you may have had with national, state, and local officials about the results of the 2020 election. Of course, today's six subpoenaed individuals joined 14 who were subpoenaed last night. And mm -hmm. I wonder if you can sort of speak to how intensive this effort around the fake electors has been and how the potential cooperation of Rudy Giuliani might influence the willingness to cooperate among all 20 of them. Well, the, the previous subpoenas for other alternate electors, I don't think they were last night. I think they were a couple of weeks ago, but I know last who you're month, referring yeah. to. Yeah, that's month. Yeah. Were the, the, you know, the, either the chair or the secretary, basically the top two alternate electors in each of the states where those slates were put forward. We know there's been a pretty aggressive effort to get those folks in early and come talk. Um, the, the inclusion of the Giuliani information here is interesting because I think you can put me in the camp of someone who's skeptical that the committee will ultimately get much by way of cooperation from Giuliani. You know, he has, in, our understanding is that he has engaged with the committee, at least in terms of talking about scheduling or talking about the possibility of coming in. Lots of witnesses do that, including some like Mark Meadows, for example, or even Steve Bannon, I believe, at one point also engaged with the committee and never showed up. So the fact that those discussions are ongoing is, is something, but it doesn't get you all the way there. The other thing with Giuliani is, given his role as, you know, a personal attorney to Donald Trump, there's a lot that he might potentially try to shield behind attorney-client privilege. What's laid out in this subpoena for this witness in Michigan today wouldn't fall under that category, right? This is not about conversations that Giuliani had with the president at the time. The committee says they're interested with conversations Giuliani was having in the state of Michigan with lawmakers in the state of Michigan. So you see the ways in which the committee might be trying to go around Giuliani, whether or not he decides to ultimately cooperate in any meaningful way or not. And Garrett, it always jumps out at me when the committee makes clear they know about phone calls that have happened between Donald Trump and anyone else they've subpoenaed. Let me read this from Kelly Ward's subpoena. In the days after the Associated Press and Fox News declared that now President Biden had won the presidential election in Arizona, you reportedly sent text messages to an Arizona election official in which you said, quote, we need you to stop the counting. 
asked the official to contact a lawyer representing the Trump campaign and said, I know you don't want to be remembered as the guy who led the charge to certify a fraudulent election. You also apparently spoke with former President Trump and members of his staff about election certification issues in Arizona. That's a uh, source to some news reporting. In addition, mm -hmm. after the election, you sent out messages suggesting that the November 2020 election had been stolen. You posted a video advancing unsubstantiated theories of election interference by Dominion voting systems, along with a link to a donation page to benefit the Arizona Republican Party. It, it, it's always revealed, I guess, more publicly in these subpoenas how much the committee already knows and understands about this effort. Yeah, and when these letters come out, I sometimes go right to the footnotes to figure out what they know Me that too. I don't know. Right, right. And where it's coming from. You mentioned, you know, in this case, some great local news reporting was actually part of how they found out about some of Kelly Ward's activities behind the scene. Look, she is a state party chair in Arizona. She's probably one of, if not the most pro-Trump Republican state party chairs anywhere in the country. She's a twice failed Senate candidate. And she has been outspoken as anybody about what she believes was the stolen election down there there. Um, Ward is an active political figure. And by the way, you know, put a pin in this because I think this is the kind of thing, uh, whether you think it's crocodile tears or not, that you're going to hear a lot of pushback from other elected Republicans on, that this is the kind of thing that they see as kind of like sort of out of bounds in the sense that here you have someone who is a public facing political figure doing public facing political things. Uh, those things in this case, trying to undermine the election results in her own state. But nevertheless, I expect Kelly Ward, someone who we will probably or more likely than not to hear from about her own views on the subpoena, I bet sooner rather than later. Joyce, let me bring you in on this. Um, we may hear from her, but the truth is the Congress has subpoena power and they have subpoenaed Kelly Ward. Congress has subpoena power to the extent that the Justice Department is willing to enforce it for them, but these folks are clearly properly subpoenaed. They don't have any sort of executive privilege or attorney-client privilege that they can assert in this regard, and they should be fully enforceable just to the same extent that Steve Bannon has been with a contempt prosecution if they fail to comply. Nicole, the really interesting thing about this group of subpoenas that comes out today is the January 6th committee has made it very clear that they're heading straight for the heart of the big lie. And they're doubling down on their belief that if they tell the American people the truth in these public hearings later this year, that they can convince just enough Americans that the truth matters, that the truth is the antidote to Trump. So this is really set up to be a showdown on the issue of whether voter fraud happened, whether it was a myth. And I think the evidence will be pretty stark in that regard heading into the the midterms. Michael Steele, your reaction to today's subpoenas? Yeah, I, I, I think uh, that frames the argument uh, precisely. It, it is the committee is laying out um, a very clear path to where it wants to go. And what I find very interesting, almost like a funnel, it is narrowing uh, the range that a lot of these uh, actors have uh, to sort of avoid getting caught, avoid having to participate. You know, you, if you are, you know, Meadows and you got the subpoena and you're like, well, I'm just not going to participate. I don't want to play. That's OK. We got reams of papers that connect you in other ways. We may not even need your testimony. We just thought we'd ask pro forma, you know? Um, so that's the problem a lot of these folks have, which Joyce could very, very clearly lay out uh, for them if they need that expert understanding um, <laughs> that just, just just because you got a subpoena and you say you thumb your nose at it does, doesn't mean that you're the only source of the evidence that the committee right. is looking for. And that, is, at the end of the day, that guessing game, what do they know? And who do they know it from? And how close in proximity does it reach Donald Trump or any of these other major players? Uh, that's what this committee has been able to do expertly. And to Joyce's point, it sets up the summer and the early fall for a very ticklish, uh, I think, spot for the GOP relative to all of those actors.